Welcome back ladies and gentlemen. Today we have a pair of $200 shoes that we're gonna see if we can tweak it, add some little characteristics to it to make it look like a $2,000 shoe. Let's get to it. Let's get all strapped in, get going. All right, so let me explain what we're doing here. We are gonna basically just take a $200-ish shoe and make it look, at least from the bottom half, like a $2,000 shoe. Because a lot of the details are sometimes, the devil's in the details. And some of those things that you will see by the close eye on a bespoke shoe that you won't see on a mass produced $200 shoe. Before we go any further, I want to talk about this shoe that we're actually working with. It is a Merriman. For those who are not familiar with Merriman or new to this channel, it is that kind of $200 price range, but they put a lot of cool details into this to make it look high end. And it's a pretty good shoe for that price range, but still some of the, the devil's in the details. And so we're going to kind of heighten some of those attributes of the shoe to make it look like a bespoke shoe. So let's keep going. I did like that these already had Lulu toe plates on them. I'm gonna put some new ones back on. All right, before I completely remove the sole, I do wanna focus on the edge here because this is one of the details that they do focus a lot on. And it's this kind of flat to a beveled waist. And that's not too far off from what we're gonna be doing, but just a little bit different. All right, so I took the rand off. For those that don't know, the rand just continues the welt on around the shoe like so. And there are a lot of bespoke shoes that do use rands, but we are not for this purpose. So we're gonna get rid of that. All right, so here are the guts of the shoe. Here's the insole, and this is the whole Goodyear welter process. For those that don't know, Joe's now joining us. This is what a mass-produced shoe looks like. It's just a canvas rib or gimming, and it holds all the shoe parts together once it's sewn. Now, a bespoke shoe would have all leather. It wouldn't have this canvas. It would actually be carved into the leather. This video is about making a shoe look like it, not turning it almost entirely into one. So we're gonna leave this and just adjust it to where we need it. So I was pulling the upper away from the gimming and I did notice this. Now this is, I first noticed it when I took the welt off. This is a factory mistake. And you actually see one of the welt holes had popped through and the upper had been cut during the factory process and it looks like they actually took part of the canvas. It's okay because we're actually going to adjust this canvas and it will pull it up and give us a fresh hole. So that's why I'm pulling this away. All right, cut the welt. I have buffed it off. It's a little thick for what I need. So we're going to run it through the stripper and cut some of that bottom part off. All right, so the only thing we did here that you didn't get to see is we actually pulled this gimming up and brought it in just a little bit to give a little bit more of a narrow waist. We can't do it too much because there's not enough leather to reach in, but we can do it a little bit. So that's all we did is just kind of brought this in just a little bit. All right, so now that we've put the welt on, we've actually trimmed it and cut through the waist. We've narrowed the, the welt down. Now, this is kind of essential to give a kind of a spade waist shape, but this is very thick right here, and this has to be tapered down so that the sole can actually fold over on top of it and give a natural beveled waist without stitches being seen.
Most of you, this is your favorite time, hot cork, but we can't use hot cork for this because hot cork is really a product for mass produced shoes and bespoke shoes, high end shoes, normally use sheet cork and we are gonna have to do some shaping with the cork. So that's where the sheet cork comes in. So we have put the cork in, we've shaped the cork through the waist to really form a fiddle. And now we're gonna prep the sole so that we can actually bend it. It's gonna hug the shapes a lot better and give it kind of the old, I gotta cut this some more, we get the old Yellowstone shape there. So normally I can put the sole on the new shoe and then if I want to do a blind stitch, I can go and cut it while it's on the shoe. It's a little bit harder when you have to cut the sole and the welt to two different lengths through the waist versus up here through the front portion. So it's a lot easier to try to make a template, a rough template, and then cut it while it's flat and cut it wider so that I have a little bit of wiggle room. But first to do that, we got to soak it in a lot of water. All right, so it is finished soaking and while it's still wet and malleable, we can kind of cut into it a little easier. So I actually go over it with an edger just to give me a guideline because we don't want to go too deep and we definitely can't go too shallow or we'll cut through the salt. <laughs> All right, fellas and ladies, while I glue this, if you could do me a quick favor, I don't think we've asked this yet. And if you're enjoying this video, of course, it, only if you're enjoying it, hit that, uh, hit that little like button down below. We'd really appreciate it. It does help the channel to grow, helps the video to be pushed out more because it says, hey, I'm really enjoying this kind of stuff. So uh, I'd appreciate it. I've been here for hours stitching this stuff. Now I know why they cost so much. Look at these stitches. Just getting snagged on this tape. Stitches are done. It's after six and it's been a long day. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Day two, let's get on it. So we have stuck the flap that covers over the stitches. We have rounded off and curled in the, the extra leather on the waist to cover up those stitches. 
And now we're gonna start to build the hill block. We'll actually clean up these soles by buffing off that top surface, uh, get us down to a fresh layer, and then we can, it opens it up for us to dye and stain and whatever we wanna do. So let's put these hill blocks on. So we have put all the stacks on, we have put our top lift on, and I've gone ahead and sanded it. Now, you'll notice if you look, there's a little bit of a slant on some of these hills. Now, this isn't across the board, but you often see uh, really that kind of artistic um, characteristics in a bespoke shoe because that, that's what a bespoke shoe is. It is completely custom and it's very artistic. Um, you'll see a lot of kind of slanted hills own a lot of higher end shoes. Now, if it looks like it's really tall, it's because we didn't put a ran on there. It's cut to where the sole is actually leaning right now up against the, the seat of the upper. And we're gonna have to trim that up and actually cut the seat. But it gives it this kind of exaggerated, higher looking heel. But it's really not that much off from an ordinary, regular heel. It's just kind of that exaggerated. Um, characteristic of it. So let's cut the seat. All right, now again, this is called cutting the seat, and basically, you have to do this to have a defined, clean edge around. Now, normally, on a, uh, a shoe that's got a ran, the ran does this and it's already shaped, but we are just using the sole with no ran. You gotta be real careful because if the knife goes too deep, it's gonna cut the upper. So we're just basically scoring it a little at a time until we break through. So we're almost done. Last thing we're gonna do is just take care of the uppers. Now these shoes are practically brand new to begin with, so there's not a whole lot we have to do. Just gonna put on some conditioner, some shoe cream, and then some wax just to really build up the toes and the heel counter on these, really make them shine. Then we're about done. All right guys, we're gonna start off with a little Renovateur conditioning cream and just uh, put a lot of moisture back into this leather. Okay, shoes have been conditioned, buffed off, and now it is time for some shoe cream. Okay guys, I just finished buffing off this pair of shoes. I used a, a horsehair brush to get the, uh, the cream off and then I always like to wipe over it just to remove any excess uh, shoe cream that was on there. Now, 
last two products that I'm going to use. I'm going to use a wax and then I want to use a mirror gloss, which is just a really hard wax. And combining with those two, it's going to give a really nice shine on this pair of shoes. Now, it's a very long, tedious process if you really want to get a mirror shine on there. I'm not sure if I'm going to go that far, but I'm going to get a really nice looking shine on it. I'm not going to show it all for time purposes, but if you want to see how we do that, check out the video above. Uh, I go much in, into much more detail there, and you can watch that and see how it's done. So, let me get to work on this pair of shoes, and then we will be done. Okay, guys, we're back, and this pair of shoes has been completed. But, as always, before we show you what they look like now, a uh, quick reminder. Uh, guys, we've talked a lot about our flip-flop sandal brand uh, for men. Uh, well, they're here. They will be launching next weekend on April 1st. It's not a joke. It's not a joke. At least this isn't a joke. So April 1st, make sure you go to southernpolished.com and we will have all of our men's sandals on there. Again, made 100% in the United States and a lot of it taking place here at our big facility here. So check us out. Uh, other than that, also, potternsons.com. Check us out there for any of your shoe care needs. All right, enough of that. What did we do? All right, these Miramims are already, and I said this earlier, they have a lot of characteristics of a higher end shoe for the price of around $200. So already impressed with the shoe. And again, this isn't a sponsored video. But what we wanted to do was take that $200, uh, $200 shoe and just add some small characteristics of what would you see different on a higher end shoe, especially something in the four figures. Mm -hmm. So some of the things that we did is add a very detailed and defined um, spine or a, a fiddle waist through the spine going into the heel on the bottoms, um, add some decorative little yeah. attributes on the bottom, and also doing things like the stitch de density going around on the welt. Mm -hmm. I think we got that down to around 10 stitches. Per a lot of inch. hand stitching it, on that shoe took, too. It took a long time yeah. to do that. Um, and also through the waist, actually, that's stitched through the waist, but it's actually curled up over the waist when you do the blind stitch. That extra piece of leather folds up over the stitches through the waist and just gives that real squared off to a round bevel. Yeah. But it just looks you really, don't see really, that really on sweet. a, a $200 shoe most. The hill block, we actually added a little bit of taper to this. Now, let me specify when I say this, not all bespoke shoes are like that. Bespoke just means custom. It's whatever you want it to be. But you do see a lot of higher end shoes that have a little bit of taper, a little bit of slant all the way around it. And I just wanted to do that as, as well and have a very uh, defined um, uh, combo oh. heel on the bottom, train of thought. And I didn't want a whole lot of rubber on it. You see a lot of combo heels that like half of the heel is rubber. I wanted just a little bit on the corner and most of that was just beautifully burnished leather. So, yeah. And yeah. then as far as the uppers, a lot of times when you get a bespoke shoe, you know, they're going to take that extra time to make that leather upper pop. You're paying for it. Yeah, you're paying for it. And it took me, uh, it took me a while to get the shine on that pair of shoes. Uh, I could have kept going and kept going, you know, and that's the thing about a mirror shine. It's however much you want to be able to see your face in it. So that's basically it. Mm -hmm. Again, we took a $200 pair of nice dress shoes and just added some things to it that you would see in a $2,000 plus dollar shoe. Yeah. So, all right guys, hope you enjoyed it. Again, we really appreciate uh, you watching and until next time, y'all have a good one. <laughs>